Greetings, all! Today, we will be examining the common water poison type Pokemon Tentacool and its relatively rare evolution Tentacruel, collectively known as the Jellyfish Pokemon. Though they might be common fodder to those that travel on the high seas regularly, the members of the Tentacool family are still dangerous beasts that can more than use the potent toxins in their tentacles to devastate even the strongest of warriors in combat. Tentacool possess blue, fleshy bodies that are partially spherical and partially rectangular in shape, with a number of creases in the front that serve to separate their face from the rest of their body and a billowy cape of flesh in the back of their body. They have a pair of pinprick black eyes on the front of their body, just above a beak-like structure on their lower ends, and their upper body is dominated by a pair of massive red crystal-like eye structures on the sides of their head and a smaller one in the center of their forehead. Extending from their dark interior space is a pair of gray tentacles that hide potent stingers in the tips that are used for attacking and immobilizing prey. Their evolved form, Tentacruel, possess the same basic body color, black eyes, and red crystal-like forms on their body, connected to each other by a series of furrows. But their general body shape has become semi-circular on top, with a flattened, almost pancake-like form leading down to their lower end, with their lower body and head being pitch black in color, with their eyes situated just below the blue crest that acts as the edge of their upper blue form. They have a pair of long, blue, claw-like structures that extend from the front of their face and the back of their heads downward, used for grasping onto larger prey, and they visibly have 14 long, gray tentacles that extend down from their black lower body and head, though in reality, they have as many as 80 tentacles that are mostly hidden from view. The members of the Tentacool family are a common sight in warm, shallow ocean waters, and are notorious not only for their relatively common occurrence, but also because of the dangerous nuisance they can prove to be to most forms of life in and out of the water. These creatures are true jellyfish by biological definition, and in turn act as singular entities that roam the open ocean, using their powerful poison-type attributes to attack and devour prey as they come across them. Their bodies are in fact 99% water outside of the soft tissue that keeps them together, with the remaining 1% being comprised of the fairly solid organ that they use to generate poison. And as with other types of jellyfish, these creatures possess tentacles whose tips are coated in stinging nematocysts that release a potent paralytic toxin when they come into contact with another life form, usually after these creatures entangle their prey in their tentacles and stab them with the appendages causing sharp, stabbing pains that quickly immobilize them and shut down their muscle systems so these creatures can then bring them closer to their main body and release digestive fluids from their tentacles to slowly dissolve their prey as they swallow it whole. While their tentacles can be pulled off with sufficient force, they usually grow back within a few days, and any contact with their toxins is a dire threat, requiring immediate medical attention to prevent them from completely killing anyone that comes into contact with them. However, Tentacool and Tentacruel are different from most jellyfish in that they have a few other special tricks to show. For one thing, they can actually inject their toxins into the water around them to make it poisonous, effectively allowing them to utilize the powerful Sludge Wave attack, a move only they and the members of the Grimer family can learn naturally. Secondly, they actually have two different sets of eyes on their body that serve two different purposes. The black eyes that most are familiar with are used to see their surroundings in the visible light spectrum that we humans are used to. But the red, crystal-like structures on their body are eyes as well, serving to grant them thermal vision in order to let them see at night and in darker, murkier depths beyond the surface area of the water where they normally like to dwell. Furthermore, they can actually absorb and focus sunlight into the backs of these eyes and concentrate it in order to release it as a powerful beam of energy. It's not usually strong enough to deal severe damage to living tissue, but it can be manipulated into a makeshift hex attack, a move that goes well with their toxic powers, 
and has the power to slowly burn through solid materials like concrete, likely being developed to target hard-shelled prey items like Shelter and Clamp Pearl, and making it a surprisingly powerful weapon worth fearing and adding onto the danger they pose with their toxins alone. As a result of their bodies being mostly made out of water, as well as their toxic attributes, these creatures have the capacity to possess the clear body and liquid ooze abilities as base abilities, while their ability to restore the health by dipping into water can sometimes be efficient enough to grant them access to the rain dish ability as a hidden ability. In terms of stats, in the case of Tentacruel, the fact that their bodies are relatively soft in nature means that they are not the most gifted when it comes to physical offense and defense, and their special powers are a bit weaker than what one might expect, resulting in their base attack, defense, and special attack stats being below average for a fully evolved water and poison type Pokemon. On the other hand, however, they have a decent amount of stamina to them, possessing an above average base HP stat for a fully evolved poison type Pokemon and the water that comprises most of their body helps to grant them a surprising resilience against special attacks, and, in combination with their deceptive speed, grants them above average base special defense and speed stats for a fully evolved Pokemon of both of their types. As such, it would be unwise to go up against these creatures without strong physical offenses on one side, as these jellyfish can easily take a hit from a special attack and keep right on going, while their toxins act to slowly weaken their opposition until they have no fight left in them. Tentacool are fairly passive predators for the most part, simply drifting languidly in the open ocean and waiting for prey to come close to them before snatching them with their tentacles and injecting their poison into them. While this can make them a serious threat in open water, as they tend to congregate in colonies of several hundred members in various small pockets and can be hard to spot because their bodies tend to blend in with the color of the water, they will not attack others that approach them with the intention of killing said intruders if they are larger than them, though they are despised by fishermen for both the damage they do to fish populations in the areas they live, but also because they will still actively sting anyone that accidentally hooks them and brings them to the surface with their poison sting and acid attacks. Because their bodies are mostly made out of water, these creatures generally need to stay in the water at all times to survive. If they wash up on the beach accidentally, such as when the tide goes out when they are too close to the shore, they will quickly dry out and be reduced to a parchment-like film of soft tissue. Thankfully though, this does not mean that they are dead, merely placed into a comatose state. If they are thrown back into salt water, they will be able to awaken and rehydrate themselves, going back to their usual business of passively attacking and devouring prey. Living in complex rock formations on the ocean floor, where they can easily attack others from while hiding, unlike their pre-evolved form, Tentacruel are active predators, and will seek out their prey rather than simply waiting for it to pass by and their aggressive nature in this regard is so infamous that they have come to earn the nickname the Gangster of the Sea. In combination with their much larger size, these creatures possess many more tentacles than tentacool. While only about 14 of them are visible under normal circumstances and are kept relatively short, these creatures in truth have up to 80 tentacles that they can extend to capture prey, though they may have less if they have lost some over the course of a long lifetime and they can stretch out their tentacles to form a dangerous net under the water and simultaneously attack up to 80 targets at once. They merely keep most of their tentacles hidden in order to protect them, using only as many as necessary to attack a specific target. While they generally feed on smaller creatures, these monster jellyfish are large enough that they can attack and successfully kill even Pokemon like Waylord using the massive claw-like extensions on their front and back to hook into a larger prey item while they wrap their long tentacles around them and constrict their target, using their stinging nematocysts to inject a powerful toxin into the prey as they strangle them to death, further employing their powerful ring-out attack to do the job if the prey is particularly feisty. The size of a prey item is not an issue for these beasts because they have the ability to absorb water to extend the length of their tentacles to near infinite lengths, allowing them to ensnare literally anything with little difficulty. 
In addition to this, while these creatures are still able to absorb light and fire it from the crystal-like eyes on their upper body, they can also use the structures to send out flashes of light in order to communicate with other tentacruel through their thermal field of vision, with a rapidly flashing signal usually indicating approaching danger and a spike in their aggression levels, and can further use this concentrated light energy to alter the elemental properties of their bodies temporarily, granting them the capacity to learn the rare reflect type technique after evolving. If needed, they can also use the structures as resonating chambers to generate and release devastating ultrasonic blasts at others in order to disorient them and confuse them, rendering them vulnerable to attack, or potentially generate rough waters in order to make it more difficult for their prey and opponents to maneuver around their speedy forms. As a whole, these creatures are incredibly dangerous to be around, both in battle and in the wild, especially since they tend to strip waters clean of all fish if they suddenly ditch their solitary lifestyles and appear in swarms in the wild, and can definitely prove to be a serious threat even if their toxic nature can be countered with defensive measures of some sort. While they might be so common on the high seas that few will pay them mind when out of the water, the members of the tentacle family are still serious threats that can definitely make life miserable for anything not protected against their toxins. You may have to tread into dangerous open water in order to find them, but if you need a decent fighter that can take special hits fairly well, you will be hard pressed to find a creature that can do so and still hit decently hard outside of these tentacle wielding invertebrates. Just make sure that, if you are going out on the open ocean and are looking to add one of these jellyfish to your team, you pay special attention to where you are and stay far away from any large disturbances you may see near or below you. Tentacool might be easy enough to throw off of your body if they get entangled around you, but you are much less likely to come out alive so easily if you accidentally get ensnared by a tentacruel and end up getting a closer look at their frightening visage than you would likely care to. Thank you all for watching this video. It is always an honor to be able to speak with you all on the subject of Pokemon in a way that brings me great joy and happiness in my work. If you would like to keep tabs on past and future work, click that subscribe button, check out my work on DeviantArt, and don't be shy about following me on Twitter where you can find pertinent announcements on upcoming work before it is officially posted. Links to both can be found in the video description. If you would like to support my work and help Miguel and I continue to produce more content for you and improve upon our presentation, please visit us at my Patreon page, which you can also find a link to in the video description. Yeah, no. With that, I thank you for watching and I wish you well.